Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to our talk, uh, specially designed to uh, talk about festivals and how we go about submitting our films. Um, I'm sure we've all been making films, um, even outside of university. Um, so I'm hoping that you are feeling inspired enough that these are films that are worth showing to a much wider audience than perhaps you've already been doing already. Um, so I'm anticipating that uh, in the next hour and a half, we will give you a little bit of uh, background to some of the, uh, the the nature of the festivals and some of the, the festivals you might want to submit to. We're also very fortunate to have with us uh, Rachel Caden, who um, is, is not only a, a former student, but is also uh, a filmmaker and producer who has got actual experience of submitting films to festivals. So she'll be able to give you her own perspective on what it's like and uh, hopefully more pros than cons. Um, so we will uh, do a, we will, I will do a presentation and we'll talk you through some of the um, aspects of submitting to films and, and some of the festivals that you might even want to think about submitting to. Uh, in the process, if there's any uh, thoughts or uh, questions that arise during the course of this presentation, then uh, please make note of them in, in, in chat or, or whatever. Um, but by the end of it, there will be a question and answer session and you can put questions to obviously both myself and to Rachel to uh, discuss any any aspect of of film festivals and and how you go about submitting your own film um, so get those thoughts ready but in the meantime i will attempt and, and all being well uh, i can remember how we do all of this for those of you that have not uh, met me before i i actually uh, am one of the lecturers at lmu and i will teach in uh, the final year uh, a module all about film festival industries so this is something that we will talk about far more in depth um, when you come to your final year uh, if indeed you're not in your final year already i haven't checked to see whether there's any of my students that i'm already teaching here watching this actual session but it is being recorded in any case so you'll be able to follow through with it so let's start the, the proceedings um, if I can get the uh, right screen up um, and uh, we can go from there so festivals it's really kind of the theme I'm kind of coming up with um, how do you find your audiences through the festival circuit uh, I'm, I'm speaking not just in behalf of being a lecturer but I myself uh, am also a, a freelance publicist and uh, work with a number of festivals um, have, and have done so from beginning of my film career really and continue to do so. So I will have some of my own perspective I can offer on this as well as obviously um, my experience now as a lecturer. So I kind of, a couple of, this is a few thoughts I just want to, come up with these are, these are what some people are saying about festivals in general kind of academics in general things like we've got that first quote saying about films need festivals festivals need films it's an obvious quote but i think it's it's worth bearing that in mind in that, that there are so many festivals now around the world and of course they will only exist if there's actually festivals to, sh to uh, there are only films to show there many of them perhaps are focusing seemingly on feature films, but in most cases, even the big festivals that we all, um, that get all the media attention, there are sections that are devoted to short films. So I think it's important to, to recognize that these festivals are only gonna exist because there are films that are going to be programmed to, into those festivals. So it's, it's true film festivals in the current political economy of cinema exists as an alternative distribution network as well. I think this is a, another important factor and I work from a perspective of, of being a distributor too. So festivals most significant purpose is providing audiences with opportunities to enjoy these commercially often unviable films projected onto a communal space. Films that most communities 
even the most cosmopolitan otherwise would not have the opportunity to see. That sounds a rather long-winded uh, way of basically saying some of these films will often only find their audience because of the nature of the, the, the subject. Um, they might even be very experimental through the film festival circuit and you might not see them otherwise in a cinema or, or a TV. That is possibly changing, of course, with um, the introduction of Netflix and uh, Amazon and, and all these streaming services. But nevertheless, it is often uh, an opportunity for you to be able to show a film of whatever style um, to a public audience. So worth bearing in mind. And I've added this quote as well from uh, Edinburgh Film Festival from John Huston. Yes, a man long dead, uh, but an extraordinary filmmaker. But he always claimed that Edinburgh was the only film festival as such that's worth a damn. And I'm, I'm adding that um, not because I think it's important to, to understand what filmmakers think of festivals, but also because Edinburgh Festival was the festival where I began my film career. So I know very much what it's like to be working in a festival of that size and that importance. When we kind of look at uh, the main festivals, you know, these are there are so many out there. Um, but I, I kind of thought it's it's worth just highlighting the ones that we all probably know about. Um, and these are the ones that will show short films. But I think this is this is where we're being overly ambitious if this is where we think we can start our film career. Um, but it's just the nature of the festivals um, it, it is that they are arranged and programmed throughout the year. So bear in mind, if you have a film that you are planning to um, put onto the festival circuit, you with careful planning can arrange for your film to be showing all year round in different festivals around the world. Um, and obviously the submission of that film is going to depend on when that festival is happening to determine what your timeline is for submission. So at the moment, we've actually got uh, Sundance is, is, is due to, to start actually, um, I think this weekend. So January, is that's probably the most significant festival and, and uh, it was founded back in 1985, still relatively young in compared to some festivals, um, promoting primarily independent filmmaking. So that's kind of its strength and that is obviously the type of film that it is championing. And what I'm also, I should add, the nature of the, the, the we will discuss as we go into this talk is that there are so many different festivals um, that are much are very specialist in their nature. So it's significant to to understand if you don't know already that obviously Sundance is focusing on independent filmmaking. Um, of course, some of those films then go on to um, win awards but they're often that's where they are discovered it's the first opportunity to see films that have been made by independent filmmakers rather than um, studios but um, we'll, we'll come into that a little bit more in depth and certainly when in my own lectures um, February the most significant festival there is Berlin which was founded back in 1951 the time of the Cold War so it was a way of trying to bring a, a touch of Hollywood glamour to what was then uh, Soviet East Germany. Um, and in fact, in many of the festivals, these big, long established festivals, there is a kind of slight political uh, overtone to, to their origins. Um, but anyway, it's worth reminding ourselves that Berlin has been going since 1951. Cannes, we all know about, you know, that uh, happens in May. And that was actually, uh, whilst it, it did begin before the, the war, Primarily, it was founded, as we know it, in 1946 with support from America and UK. Again, again uh, a festival that was intended to try and um, create, I feel like, uh, a kind of investment in, in a country that had been devastated uh, by war. Uh, Edinburgh, which we've, I've mentioned, um, it keeps changing. It was originally in, in June here when it was founded in 1947 and started out as a documentary festival. And if you know anything about um, Scottish filmmakers or documentary filmmakers, you realize that people like John Grierson, uh, you know, that's where he started out in. He was, he was a Scot. Um, so it's kind of a way of honoring some of the Scots that have made a reputation for themselves internationally 
in the documentary field. But it is the longest continual festival, believe it or not. Um, it did move through to August. Um, it's it then, I think, is moving back to August. It's it's kind of been changing its its timings, um, partly affected as well through um, COVID. Venice um, is the one that is is most prominent in September. And actually, this is um, the oldest festival in the world, founded back in 1932. And this is the time where Mussolini was was coming rising to power and was using it more as a propaganda for actually what was um, he, he was doing um, as far as Italy is concerned and, and the perspective of Italy to the world. But it, Biennale, which we kind of we, we now often talk in terms of was itself founded back in 1895. So that aspect of it um, has, has, has been going a little bit longer. Uh, Toronto uh, is is another of the main festivals that you perhaps are aware of, um, and it was bringing the French and English speakers together to create a national identity for, um, I suppose, Canada in 1976. So again, that's been going a while. And here in London, the 90, uh, the, the London Film Festival, which keeps changing its name depending on who is the sponsor, started back in 1953, primarily by founded by critics. Now, I don't know how many of you might have been to any of these festivals. Um, I know Rachel has, uh, and going to these festivals is often a, a, first, a good starting point to get a feel for, if I'm going to submit a film, is this the right place to submit it? Um, is this something that you found, Rachel? Do, have, are there any of these festivals? I think there's at least one, if not two, that I know you've been to that um, you went to as an observer. Yeah, so I was fortunate enough to go to Berlin um, back in 2018 now. Um, that was amazing because we got, we went, I, I actually went with um, the uni, a few of us were picked to kind of go um, over there and we were able to get into the meat markets. So um, that was the only festival I've been to where, and I, I went away and paid money to go and stay away. I barely saw any films at um because the best thing about places like that i was a student at the time i never told anyone i was a student i was always a director or whatever i needed to be in that conversation um uh, but i learned how to um network massively what people were looking for at festivals how how they were kind of pushing their own agendas i mean i had lots of emails trying to sell me stuff afterwards and people trying to push their career but I also got some really good contacts out of it. I actually saw two of the best films, or no, sorry, one of the best films I've ever seen <laughs> that I would never ever have um, have come across otherwise. Um, it was called Makila, and it was about um, a girl living on the streets of the Congolese capital. Um, we were, were all standing clapping by the end of it, but again, it, it was really good to kind of not go and see what everyone else was going to see but def but definitely these places are attracting a lot of people doing what you're doing so why wouldn't you go mingle talk get to know people i teamed up with a south african um producer who um i was going to do some writing with, but now i just watch his films for him and feedback but you know it's still a good friend that i've kept i made a film with somebody a year later that i met there um I produced a film and, and that's won a couple of small awards um, and, I've, and I've teamed up with other people that may be more like composing and sound design but that I still can regularly meet up with and we can keep in the loop and what's nice is when you have friends in film you have loyalty in film and for me that's that's where Berlin was amazing. I went, I've went i been to London Film Festival a couple of times, um, seen some fantastic films there that really inspired my filmmaking but again the networking events around there and around the time of those festivals were what it was about really yeah well, thank you yeah I, I think that's a valid point is to, is to recognize that you know sometimes the festival well the the, the way of, of of developing an understanding and, and a knowledge of the industry that you want to working is by networking and i know it's often a a scary word for for a lot of people as to, as to what that actually means but i think once you find yourselves in the, these natural in arenas 
where you are having a shared experience with like-minded people and and those that are also perhaps in a similar situation as, as with Rachel it, you know you're wanting to make films and you're wanting to share stories and you want to kind of share that enthusiasm that networking becomes a natural part of the experience I'm not saying it isn't easy it isn't it's it's easy always but um it, it's not the constant hard sell element i think it uh, we need to just bear that in mind um many of these festivals are, has to has to be added i mean uh, maybe rachel can uh, clarify with berlin but i know with with places like london and, and edinburgh for example the two the uk ones um and i know sundance definitely um will do will program short film strands and you know someone has to curate them in terms of obviously deciding on, on the length of the program but also the, the the kind of thematic nature of what films you can put together um, but they're often the ones that uh, has to be said sell out first um, ahead of all the big um, blockbusters I know Edinburgh used to because a lot of the films that were submitted and, and probably still are submitted in, in Edinburgh would have come from the university and film students uh, so this was a, a, a once once a, in, a, in a you know year's opportunity to be able to show a film in a public arena to an international audience um, but obviously you're all very keen to actually go and see your film and invite your friends and family um, so it's not surprising that sometimes these these were the very first screenings to sell out um, but it's 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 a great opportunity and so if, if none of you as yet have had a real chance to go to any festival for whatever reason and, and obviously the one thing that would have prevented from us from doing that is uh, the pandemic and how that's affected all of our activities um, certainly many of these are have been doing uh, online festivals um, and uh, you know you might want to to join in from that aspect now um, but you might also want to sort of consider if now that the freedoms of, of to travel are returning that maybe there's a one or two festivals out there that you uh, are interested in in, in visiting um, anyway that's the main ones that to just bear in mind but they they are really only the tip of a massive um, iceberg that um, is is made up of film festivals. But so I mean I suppose um, a lot of what it comes down to is was how do you 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 sub when, choose where to submit? Um, and there are so many festivals in in the UK alone that uh, depending on the subject matter and genre uh, that it's 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 it it, all, it will come down to. I think an understanding for all of you, if you make with the films you have made, is to well, who is the audience that you're aiming it for, um, and that obviously determined by the subject matter and genre as to the nature of of, of who you might target. So I, I want to kind of guide you towards a great resource which is provided by the British Council. Uh, the British Council. Uh, has a films department you know it's all about supporting the arts uh, around the world um, and they recognize the value of film so they have um, come up with a, a, a database um, which is uh, listing information on thousands of festivals from as it says here over 80 countries and it's a great resource for film video and program makers um, which has over 13 100 events listed um, I might see if I can provide you with this link to have a look at in, in due course but we will provide you with a chance to see all this um, we will the um, as we we will make certain that you have this presentation uh, accessible so that you can watch it um, in your own time as well but the great thing was is, is the the British Council because it's about promoting British films and because it's all about working with the international market likes to um, likes to show avenues to, to show what the talent is that is, is, is making films from a whole range of filmmakers whether they're student filmmakers uh, animation um, experimental um, 
it's it's the, uh, the diversity and, and range of filmmaking talent that is out there so you might as i say find that you've got the right film that they feel um, they would like to help promote and and there are they list say all these various festivals on a national international level um where it's all about to a public audience um but they do not pu publish submissions um and it doesn't necessarily mean that they have to say that whatever festivals are listed in their database are necessarily ones they endorse as as you will realize um if you haven't done already uh, and i'm sure uh, rachel's already done this is, is that there <laughs> we're not just talking a handful of festivals we are talking thousands and thousands of festivals now um around the world um and it takes some time to work your way through what what festivals you feel are suitable for your film um and you might kind of and then it's it's so it's a little bit it's a bit about planning um so the, the the great thing about this database is at least it it's a resource created in the uk um as a way to try and filter the information you might be looking for so in terms of you know a film festival from what country or or town or even festival title you know and and more importantly as we said at the very beginning about the the time of the year because we're talking january so it's no good trying to submit to things like sundance that's come and gone it's too late for berlin um if that's what you wanted to do as well um but you start looking at what film festivals might exist in and around january um or sorry in june onwards uh and you're perhaps in a better position uh and you know as, as suzanne has, has has just said you know she, she herself has submitted something in the past through the british council so it, it does work i mean maybe at the end you know suzanne might even feel she wants to kind of offer a little bit of thoughts from from what she gained from that experience but it it's a resource that i, I i'm highlighting now I, i'm not going to explore it in any great detail um, because to say you, you, you've got the link there, you can have a quick look at if, if you want now. Um, but this information will be made available um, so that you can look at it at your own leisure. Um, but I, I mean, I know Suzanne has said this, uh, that she used it. So for you, Rachel, um, is how did you go about choosing where to submit? I mean, I'm not saying you necessarily use this British Council method, but knowing there's so many festivals out there how did you start looking at where to submit to that first festival well so first of all my the first film i completed was before my third year of uni um that i, I did it outside of outside of classes and just got a group of friends and made something and i got some um some good actors what one of them was um had been in a, an a a cinematic film I had seen it was very exciting um, and I was yeah I'm taking this to festivals and I actually submitted that to I, I think that was the because there was film freeway what was the other one for that they closed down now oh um, yes there was another um, one. Well, you'll remember I, it but there was yes, another yeah, one I'll, I'll remember it, yeah. <laughs> and I, so I was putting it out everywhere and I even I was looking at events and I found um, a small festival it's now actually a BAFTA qualifying festival what this small festival at the time was running a small screening and it was in a tiny little room and I thought great and I was talking to the head of that festival and I was just trying to find it I, I didn't even look at what festivals were doing what I just was like right I've got this much money go 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 um, and I actually that film got me nowhere I mean I made friends with the head of a festival and I was selling it big and I was like I am in there and nobody took the film um because i i just thought i've made something that's good everyone's going to want to see it um and i had a very harsh reality of actually the, the topic wasn't great um it wasn't the festivals don't want to promote it it was essentially a gang film um didn't have a great message either it was a, a concept for a feature um and and nothing happened so after that it was much more about looking at film festivals uh going through things like film freeway and the other one that we can't remember the name of but it's gone without, a box. without a box without, without a box yes but yes i think you're right um but going going through 
lists of them and just googling them and looking them up and having having a look at what's in them before going to other festivals as well when i went to london and i i, I saw a, a few short films that completely like some of them weren't really well made some of them were student films and they you could tell they didn't have the money they didn't have the experience yet um so the quality of the film wasn't great but the story and the message was something that you know got everybody and and even and and, and I, I one film i watched once was uh, robot and scarecrow and if you haven't seen this everybody should see this because it's how to make a film without dialogue completely um if you have a dry face by the end of it you're not human um but it, it but that was also um that had a lot of money pumped into it but it was starting to inspire me to see what films i was watching and the common themes and there was always something important even if it was a comedy a comedy film or if it was you know short film or a feature film there was something not new but um, um like important that was being said and what i started realizing is film festivals worry about or, or, or concerned about what their message is as well so so i would spend a lot of time looking at um the, the different types of festivals what what they were aimed at what my film could fit into like and it sounds as cold as anything but you know um where's everybody from how old is everybody is is you know how many women do we have are there any disabilities or any of this because they all become hooks for festivals to maybe just go this fits our checklist that we have to meet this fits mm. like you know when um there was all the outrage about us about female filmmakers that was a great time to be a, a woman um pushing anything um or when there weren't enough um black people nominated at the oscars that was a great time to to drop anything like that so sorry to go on a bit but yeah it, that so i started doing my homework and making lists of what my film could fit into and i wrote a film that ticked a lot of those boxes um as well which which helped a bit so does that does that mean that that with that knowledge and having then planned your next feature with with uh those a criteria in mind the submissions for that film were more successful they they were so actually they were the the thing that let us down there is we did the work but then executing it doing the admin side of things especially as students we get lazy and we just want it to be <laughs> easy mm. um but that film actually that was nominated for an rts award a royal television society award it won Fantastic. A couple of it, it got screened at um at what are now qualifying festival um and 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 it got a few smaller um nominees and, and awards as well brilliant so there we go there, there's uh example of, of lessons to learn and i think we you know we're all we've all been watching this you know in terms of diversity and inclusion and the way the industry has been kind of swinging backwards and forwards as as to how it's trying to um get representation more evenly spread so you know if if, if that's something that, that's being seen from uh you know what we expect to see on screen in terms of um representation actors storylines um a lot of that is also thought process going on behind screens in terms of you know how we're making those films and who's who's making those films and then of course it's it's going to be um trying to target uh the right festival as, as rachel was saying and and you know a lot of that will be googling but at least the resource this is one of those resources um that i say I've, we, we, i'm suggesting you have a look at here and and obviously it's it's work for suzanne too from what she's saying um it's at least all that information is gathered together in one point and and therefore rather than you just googling festivals you can go on and and, and to um a resource like this a database and, and and work your way through the festivals that you think could be suitable for your film um or i mean you might just want to find out a little bit about the festival and then come up with a film that will fit that festival you know it's it's a two-way thing um 
because I kind of want to, you know, as we're saying, selecting your festival is a matter of knowing your target audience. And I, and I find this time and time again, particularly when I'm promoting films, you, you know, and, and as, as and I do uh, this as, as freelance now, but working with distributors, you know, so much is all about, right, if we're going to put a film out there for um, the cinema or DVD or, um, you know, and it's, it's a streaming platform one way or another, we have to have some idea of who that audience is. And I, and I have to say, I get rather tired of uh, filmmakers that will present me with a film and going, well, look, I've made a film. Well, that's a great deal. Um, just as, as any writer might come up with a book or as a singer might come up with a song and you're going, well, that's all well and good. That's an achievement. But who do you want to listen to it, watch it, um, read it outside of yourself and you know a lot of them then i've had have turned around and said well you know that's your job as a publicist and going, no it's not um you know my my task is not to try and work out your audience you have to at least have some idea of the audience you have in mind so when you have been making your film i'd like to think you you have had that as part of your process or if not immediately then if you step back and look at the film and the subject matter you will be able to figure out who you feel would be the target audience so it this is where the, finding the right festival will also help in terms of getting your film selected um so many festivals e exist with a specific subject in mind so i kind of choosing just a, a few random ones really i mean for horror is a big genre uh, and 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 horror is a well as as a, as the films themselves are a wide range of what we call horror. You know, it's it's not stalker slash all the time. Some of them are more psychological, some are more um, experimental. Um, you know, others it's it's more about the kind of uh, a kind of fantas fantastical aspect to it all. Um, but it might be quite obscure in some ways. But, you know, there are festivals out there. One of the most well known, perhaps, um, if you are into horror, is Fright Fest, which has been going in London now 22 years. Um, that's always uh, August Bank Holiday. I get involved in that. So um, that's possibly why I am championing that a little bit. Um, but that does have, it's not all about feature films, that does have short films and you know there are there is programming of the short films i'm not certain whether submissions are open for it yet i need to check um but they do show short films and you know it's very much and they will create them as short film programs so it's not as if you're tucked in front of a feature unless there's a, there's, a, there's a very valid reason to do that um and there are workshops it has to be said now introduced into the festival um for those filmmakers that have that um, particular subject matter um abattoir is another festival i just i just choose because it's a great name because it's based in aberystwyth in wales uh at the university itself so abattoir is of course a great pun on our names too for what is a horror festival um and that's usually around about october time not surprisingly around halloween but there are other horror festivals you know not just in the uk um they're they're all across the world so if you if you feel your film has a horror content, no matter how obscure you think it is, there could be a you could find a whole range of festivals worldwide that you could submit that to, rather than let's say trying to submit it to something general like a London Film Festival. Um, likewise, with any films that have LGBTQ plus content, um, there are thousands well let's say hundreds perhaps of uh, those festivals um worldwide too uh which are welcoming of short films um bfi flair um does its short film programs which again always hugely successful um in terms of uh, getting an audience uh, there um and the iris prize is perhaps one i should highlight again it's a festival i work with so perhaps i have a slight invested interest um but it actually has um as an incentive it's got a thirty thousand pound prize attached to uh, what is a competitive festival um for short films it does show features but primarily it's all about short films 
Um, they have a Best British Strand as well, where all of those films that are, are programmed, so it's not just the winner, it's all 15 films that are programmed, um, get shown for a year on film four. So again, in terms of a filmmaker, your exposure to an audience is, is so much greater as a result of submitting to a festival like that. Um, there are others, as I say, around the world. So again, if you feel that your film fits into the, any of that sort of um, subject matter, then there perhaps there's a whole number of festivals there that you might want to specifically look at. Um, documentary is, is is another one I thought it was, was quite a good subject to just, um, whilst all of these films, and that includes, you know, your Londons and uh, your Sundances, but also, you know, even, you know, what we're just talking with Iris or Fright Fest, they will show documentary too. So, but there are festivals that will specialize only in documentary and Sheffield Doc Fest is probably the most um, well-established and re renowned one here in the UK. It's usually around about June, I think it is. Um, and perhaps I should should add with this instance, it, it focuses on film and television. Uh, what we uh, it, it is worth noting is that there are festivals out there that are not just simply about films that you want to show in the cinema. We, we need to recognize that, you know, a lot of documentaries are made with TV in mind, and there's certainly a lot with all the streaming services now. Um, so that could be a festival that fits perfectly into your um, favored subject matter. Uh, also, in terms of networking, if you were networking and this is the area you want to work in, you could be mixing again with a whole load of people and commissioners for that matter too, that um, could be invaluable, offer you invaluable support uh, and encouragement for your uh, future um, in documentary filmmaking. Um, you know, there's animation as well uh, out there. I mean, you, you, can, you can break it down into so many different subject matters. I mean, I, I kind of highlight that, you know, there are a number of those short film festivals, um, the different ranges that are out there. I mean, the short film fest, London Short Film Festival, which is currently on, has just started for this year. That's obviously, you know, it's all about short films. Encounter Short Film and Animation Festival is over in Bristol. So, um, you know, again, that focuses purely on short films. Then there is the Water Sprite International um, Student Festival, which is based in Cambridge. Um, Africa in Motion uh, is, is a film festival that is, that is uh, Scottish based, that specializes in short films. Um, and there are many, many others, but it just kind of gives you an idea that when we are talking short films, we can break it down in, into substantial different subject matters. Um, these are all UK festivals, uh, but that is just a small handful of what's in the UK. You then take it onto the continent and then you take it worldwide and you'll find that the number of festivals grows enormously. Um, and in fact, what I want to really um, highlight at this point um, is just the number of festivals that are in London alone that are spread throughout the year. Uh, a lot of them um, have a cultural connection to local communities. So it might be an initiative that is designed as a way of bringing a community together. Um, and, and, you know, that will be might have been done as, a, as an initiative by a local council. It might be with uh, funding from some other um, body with sponsorship and, and whatever. Um, others, it could be no more than a program of curated films you know, to support particular cinema. Um, you might you might see that in your own cinema. Um, again, I don't know what parts of London or if indeed outside of London that you're living and therefore what access you have to particular cinemas. The Genesis Cinema that um, is not far from the university itself, up at Mile End, um, they were often host a whole range of festivals um, and, and um, you know, sometimes they will create their own festival. Um, but this is just kind of a short um, selection and you can see there's a, there's a lot of a grouping um, towards the end of the festival, uh, towards the end of the year, should I say. So whilst London Short Film Festival is on right now, you then got Flair itself, um, which will be in March, so that's not far off. It's more at the same time that there's a Human Rights Watch Film Festival. So again, different subject matter that will cover a whole range of different 
subjects as you as you can imagine um but that is is something where there's a uk branch of what is an international curated festival um you've got the the uk asian film festival which is tongues of fire which is primarily um south asian and indian film that comes out in may and june um all of these you know will have feature films it's true but they also have prominent short film programs which is why i'm highlighting them because obviously they will be looking for product to program that is short films uh, fright fest we've mentioned um then there is the queer east film festival in september um which is um which is about um east asia primarily is, is is what they mean there but it is also often uh, that it's it's kind of centered on cinemas in and around uh, east london at the same time um open doc fest that uh, is is again it's it's perhaps self-evident this is a documentary festival again in september tunisian film festival is also happening in in september um rain dance which you might all be aware of you might even have gone along to you might even submitted films to that is it has grown, I think, into being a, an established festival for student filmmakers. Um, so first time filmmakers um, more than anything. Um, it used to be more, far more when it first started off as, as a kind of um, picking up a lot of independent film. But I think now there's so much, uh, so many other festivals that have, 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 have taken on a little bit more of that mantle that Rain Dance now focuses far more on being for students and, and more first time filmmakers, but a lot um, of short films shown and therefore a lot of visiting short filmmakers there too, to meet and network along with a whole range of, of um, established filmmakers and actors uh, that you might get a chance to see. Um, it happens just before London Film Festival. So um, London primarily that will be kind of West End most of that and obviously the bfi south bank but that's october you've then got um, just after that the london east asia film festival so that tends to to um, specialize obviously on, on all of those films you might find from um, south korea and from china hong kong um, thailand etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, some of which might be documentary, some of which, which might be queer. Um, but as I say, it's, it's, so you might find that if you've submitted your film to one of those earlier festivals, it might also a program here, unless they, they are very specific about having um, a, a kind of UK premiere. Um, you've got the Fringe Queer and Arts Festival then in November, which is more does include a lot more experimental stuff. The London Turkish Film Festival, that again will be programmed in maybe only a couple of week, a couple of days, but nevertheless, it's it's very specifically focusing on new Turkish film, uh, bringing in some of the filmmakers as well. Uh, Jewish Film Festival, that's a very prominent one for North London. Then there's the London Migration Film Festival, London International Animation Festival, Palestinian Palestine Film Festival, Russian Film Week, which is more or less the film festival, which is November to December, South London Film Festival. And the British Urban Film Festival, which is uh, a lot of it tends to be BAME content, um, which is perhaps self-evident and how why they're using the word urban. Um, but um, that just gives you an eye, a, an idea of some of the many, many festivals that happen in London all year round um, and the diversity of them. So it, that's you, you, you've perhaps now got a, a lot to be mulling over you're probably all sit well hopefully you're all sitting there going oh i wonder which my film would it fit into that festival hmm i think it might fit into that festival oh no it's not it's not one for for, for that festival however of course the big process is is getting it programmed to that festival and how do you go about that it's it's not a simple getting in contact by email it's not as submitting it directly to whoever is programming it that, that particular strand the short film strand um there is a, a procedure um and we've got to remember that um you know this is a, uh, a now with the growth of festivals and the growth uh, perhaps even more so of films being made short films um, as well as features um then there has to be a way of managing the volume of films 
um, and how you go about, if I was programming a festival, how do I encourage people to submit to my festival in a way that I can control that number and perhaps more importantly than I can actually then uh, watch what content is coming in and how I select from that content. Um, and you heard Rachel earlier saying that you know what she has been doing with uh, films is, is was, was originally we had without a box, but we now have this one um, organization called Film Freeway, which some of you might already know, um, but it is the one stop shop now for submissions. Um, it's where it alerts you to what festivals are available and when when their submission dates open. So it becomes an invaluable reference point as well for a necessary tool for really preparing for entries. Um, so it kind of much like the British Council, but this is a much more sophisticated, perhaps in, in many ways. Um, it offers it, it kind of you've got a chance to discover many festivals. So there's thousands of world's top film festivals and creative contents um, that um, are highlighted through its website. Um, and, you know, I think the, the contest is an important part of it because at the end of the day, you know, just hoping that it's not just being seen by an audience, but one incentive is obviously to say that there's awards attached to it. Um, and, you know, those those awards could be financial, they could be just something where you have got palms that you can add into your marketing and, and possibly open up doors for funding of your next film. Um, oh, but they're over. Sorry, before yes. I forget and, and, and uh, we go on to Film Freeway, with that London list that you pointed out, what's great yeah. about that is you're not attending a London university. Um, you can be attending these festivals. I mean, I think, I don't know how they're running things, if they're doing them online still or whatever, but you should be getting to these festivals and looking for any events these festivals are putting on, like social events, networking events as well, um, because then you're seeing what is being accepted locally to you. Um, you know, Buff at the bottom of there is now a BAFTA qualifying film festival. They're very approachable and they, they love, they're, they're spreading through London, but it's actually a very small industry. So you will probably bump into similar people at several of those festivals. And the more you get to know what kind of films that they're taking on, the more you kind of know if your film's relevant for their festival. But also, if you're submitting to these festivals, even if you're not getting accepted, they are seeing your work. So if you submit one film one year and they don't take it, and then the next year your work is upgraded by a lot and it's really fitting in with the theme, that is, um, that is something they'll see as well. And then they'll see you on the rise as a filmmaker. People will be familiar with your name and face. You can volunteer at these film festivals as well. And you're getting to know the business of um, filmmaking rather than just the action of filmmaking. So. Yeah, I, thank you, Rachel. That's actually some very good points there. And in fact, I, I should have highlighted um, the idea of, of, of going along and, and seeing these and more importantly, volunteering. Because, uh, you know, as I said, my, my own experience started by volunteering for Edinburgh Film Festival. Um, and it's an extraordinary experience. And, and um, there are so many of these festivals and you say if you if you start looking at your what's on your own doorstep you might find that actually you don't have to travel from one side of london to the other it could actually be happening at your local cinema or one not far away um and most of these festivals clearly whilst there is only that they have a, a small paid member of, of, of uh, permanent staff but a lot of it is run by volunteers um, and so you know it could be an extraordinary opportunity for you to um, learn about the industry by actually getting involved in the festival and as a result of being involved in that festival better understanding how you would go about submitting your films um, in the future and I know that's happened with um, uh, filmmakers that have worked with things like Edinburgh Film Festival with flair with even fright fest for that matter um so yes i think that's a very valid point thank you rachel um and i noticed that um suzanne is also asking what is a bafta qualifying festival we'll come to that in a little while um uh, suzanne because it's you, as as we can figure out with um
Well, I th I think actually that's a, that's a, that's an interesting point there, Sandra. Sandra, and in fact, maybe it'll it'll be self-evident, or we, we can talk about that in in what we're about to discuss in terms of submitting through Film Freeway. That might answer your question, because um, or, or we're looking at that film, uh, the British Council's list of festivals. Though this is where you do your res you can do your research and find out what criteria is for submitting your film but hang um, on because... hang, can i just interrupt I, did sandra just mean going along as a guest because she's just said um just to go to one of these festivals so perhaps she just means just to participate ah, sorry there <laughs> thank you suzanne for, for qualifying that and sorry for, for, for um which any, anybody that. anybody can go along can't they i mean you just you just yeah. uh, pay pay for a ticket and go yeah, I think it's important to to recognise, and, and and maybe this is something that also you know Rachel will will um, say is is that you know the certainly the festivals in London, they are all paying audiences. You know there are sometimes opportunities to to go and see these films for free. They sometimes provide a, some free content, um, but I think if you want to, you know, and and the huge and there's usually um, in, in London, I know. Um, or the BFI in general, you know, mm -hmm. there are incentives for students. Um, it's exactly. So, you know, you're not, you could be paying as little as three pound a ticket anyway, rather than the full um, 10 pound price that a ticket might be or, or, or 20 pound, probably more likely. Um, so again, it's, it's kind of think about the sort of films, festivals that you'd be interested in, Sandra, and look at, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, as the, the London Short Film Festival is on, is just literally starting. Um, uh, and I will show you the link to that at, at the end of this talk. Um, have a look if there's anything there, because not only are there short films uh, being shown, so you can sit in, in cinema and, and, and watch a selection of films, but there are often talks that are aimed at short filmmakers. You know, it is a short film um, festival after all. Um, and you can, and there is um, a, a fee that you pay for the talk. So you might find that as browsing through what the full program of the festival, you are better placed to buy a ticket for a talk um, rather than purely just uh, a short film program. But I think what is the other benefit, and again, Rachel might might um, qualify this too, is that many of these film festivals are not just showing films. They are inviting the filmmakers themselves to come along and talk about those films as well. And that might indeed have happened with 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 you, Rachel. Yes, I was. I, I don't know if I'm going to put Jeremy in it or you guys in it. <coughs> now, we got free tickets and I saw Moonlight, which won an Oscar. I saw several. And we saw the whole the director and the cast of Moonlight did a talk and we got that for free through the uni. So but, but I wasn't told that. Um, how did I find that out? It was a lucky thing that I found that out. Um, it wasn't advertised massively, and only a small number of us got to go. So ask Jeremy, ask um, the uni as well if there's any, like you know, your, your lecturers and stuff, if there's anything going on, um, because because that's a huge way to go in. But yeah, often they, you can just go into pay to see a film because often they're spread out in different areas of London, in different places. You can go and see a film. And there's often like a kind of mingling after or before and use that time to speak to people because you'll also start learning how people talk at film festivals because it's not just like oh did you enjoy the film a lot of the people seeing films at film festivals are filmmakers uh, people in the film business and uh, film buffs so there's a language that you and a confidence that you can learn um just by by turning up but yes you can get you can get tickets you can normally go onto the festival website and find them yeah i think that's a that's a that's a point is is you know some of these festivals are just small little festivals and i say they are literally just perhaps you know even a one day event that they call themselves a festival because they've curated a day of festivals with a theme um others you know as, as we are, are aware you know will run for you know two weeks so uh, some are very small but oh, you know, they, that's all about trying to, and I say with a lot of those that we've mentioned earlier, things like the Turkish Film Festival, even the Jewish Film Festival and um, the Human Rights Film Festival, well, maybe not Human Rights, but um, 
you know, the East Asia Film Festival, it, it's all about bringing in the community as well. And so there's often incentives to, to encourage the community to get involved. And that could be you know, uh, discounted tickets. It could be um, actually free tickets. You just never know. But I think it's, it's, it's uh, what I'm hoping we can do with the university is, 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 it is something that we've not, um, been able to uh, effectively um, follow through with possibly as a result of, of the pandemic and, and everything that's been going on the last two years, uh, a way of, of trying to support you and encourage you uh, to seek out festivals and, and festival opportunities. I'm hoping that I'll be able to um, change that a little bit with some of, the, of my knowledge and experience, but um, uh, I think it's, we'll all try and make a little bit more of an effort uh, because I think it's so much more important that we recognise that there are so many opportunities out there to, to capitalise on um, and uh, benefit from. Uh, but I think, you know, what we want to talk about a little bit more is, is how you submit to these festivals. So, you know, so all of these festivals you, you can go and, and watch. Uh, and clearly, if you get your film um, accepted, then there are incentives there for you to come along with, with free tickets and, and invited guests too. However, um, what you need to do is to get your festival or your film into that festival in the first place. So you can watch, all of you can, can watch these films as a member of the audience. But if you use a filmmaker, how have you managed to get that film uh, submitted in the festival in the first place? And I say, Film Freeway is now the kind of the, the way in which you do that. Uh, and, and it's kind of um, a way of, of easing admin where you, you um, register with Film Freeway and then this gives you specific details about what you need to put up um, in terms of um, highlighting your film as being available for uh, programming. Um, and then once you've got it on its platform, you will be able to submit it to the various festivals that you feel would be appropriate for your film. Um, clearly, it's not always going to guarantee that that film will be um, programmed, but at least you are then targeting through this portal the, uh, the, the, uh, those who will be making that selection and which festivals you have decided you, you're going to submit that to. A lot of it is going to do, come down to as well, uh, remembering this is an industry, that there's a cost involved. Uh, so I think this is a point where maybe um, Rachel can, can talk us through how you go about and what you need to um, put forward in when you are submitting through Film Freeway and how that has worked, hopefully, to the benefit of the films she's submitting to festivals. Maybe one or two kind of um, cautionary tales in the process. So how, how have you found the way of using Film Freeway, Rachel, and, and kind of what would what would be the basic things they would, uh, any of our students or any filmmaker would, would do in order to start the process? Um, well, first of all, you can set up an account on there and you can upload your films, your scripts. Um, I mean, they cover a whole load of things, um, TV stuff, uh, stage plays, everything. So you can upload your projects and you can give all the, as much or as little information about each project before you send it. You'll normally need a link to the actual film so they can um, see it when you submit. Um, but the, the, you know, what it's great for is, and I would honestly, I would suggest you do this as part of your um, development stage or your pre-production stage, um, but is, we go through and select everything we kind of want to look for it. So BAFTA qualifying film festivals, student film festivals, in your case, there are a lot of student film festivals. It means you're not competing in such a, 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 a world that has, you know, so much more experience on you of how festivals might work, for example. Um, you can select everything that kind of applies to you and make an Excel spreadsheet. And, and what we do is we make a list of um, our BAFTA qualifying festivals because they're the ones that are probably going to cost the most money and we might have a budget of I mean you always start off with a bigger budget and by the end of making a film you've lost it so it's kind of that's why it's kind of good to prep your festival strategy first because then you'll you'll try and hold on to that money but we'll go through the more expensive festivals and their deadlines that we want to target that 
getting into might accelerate your career a little bit more or it might give you access to to more people that can help accelerate your career um but then we'll look for anything relevant and 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 in your case definitely student um student festivals or categories or anything that will come up like that because um if you make a really good student film and you're submit and you're active enough to submit it to festivals you've already beaten a lot of people out there because on it honestly a lot of the time you're battling with people that you know that might not show up as much or that can't be bothered to do the festival run or that you know they don't have the money to buy them the time to do it so a lot of my first um laurels i got were all student film film festivals people won't know that i never i never advertise that I like my um RTS awards and some of the other student laurels I got from small festivals I just name the festival um but yeah so so it it's about kind of if you've got 200 pounds and if there's a crew I don't know how you you guys are doing films at the moment but if there's a crew of um 10 of you and you're putting 20 quid that's a 200 pound budget you've got and you could pick up two or three really good um looking festivals and then go for some smaller looking ones and then find the free ones there's a lot of free student ones that run every month but you know if they run every month you've got a, a higher chance of of getting something um, and and also the other thing and I learned this uh, actually with Paul when I when I was in your classes it is um, the press packs that you do for your films so they would be being done throughout uh, you know as as soon as we're working on a script we're looking at getting our log line tight our synopsis tight um everything written about the film really nicely looked at especially because you're you know you're at uni you've got people who can help you make these stronger um they go on on the project um dashboard as well you should be able to say your log line um off by heart really well and it should make people uh, attracted to your film and then you can upload the artwork as well so some people might do do their own artwork you know graphic designers out there or just very talented artists and then when you made the film you can take the artwork make your posters make that look really good and look at the big films that are coming out in the cinemas and try and replicate the kind of information they're putting on um, but then you upload these on your projects and you know that can help even stand out as well because people have got a full load of information to understand where it will fit in the festival. Like this is about, um, you know, somebody overcoming, let's think of a subject in the media at the moment, I mean, other than the obvious one, but like, you know, when it was, um, I'm trying, you've gone completely blank. Me, me too, the, me, the era of me too. If you were making a film that challenged anything to do with sexual violence, you know, you, your logline can replicate that. You can put that all in your information and in your press pack. That same information is copied over, and then people are seeing that and they go, "Right, that's current. That's that's a topic we're handling. Let's watch the film." Like you, you just they might be more engaged to to do it. Would that be right, Paul? Am I just waffling? Yeah, that is. I, I think. Yeah, I'm just thinking with with. I mean, I, I uh, you know, thank you, Rachel, for for, for um saying that I've, I've obviously given you some sort of guidance so some things worked there that is good uh but it is it's it's you know along with knowing your audience it, it's also preparing that press information um because that's one of the things that not only you need for promoting a film but this is that is what you will need to upload onto film freeway because i think if if uh, i remember correctly what is primarily expected when when you uh, open up your account in, in order to make this uh, possible is is you have your press pack up there with your log line um, with art and stills um, because obviously you think if festivals accept it then they will want visual material to put into their catalogs or on their website um, along with a link to the film so you know these are all things that as you're making a film you should be automatically doing because if you want to have a, a, a life beyond just simply showing the film within, you know, the university context, um, then it's 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 worth having all that material. Because if if you want to make a career within the film, TV, animation, computing, the, the same principle is there. You know, have your um, marketing advertising material to hand um, alongside, you know, the actual finished product. Um, 
but it's gonna because it, there is um you know there, there, there's what you'll find with all festivals there are kind of submission opportunities and rising scale of costs as well depending on when you submit um and i think it's primarily we're talking the early bird is the first option whereas once a festival is open to submissions within a couple of months they're suggesting if you submit in that period of time then it's only going to cost you so much then they kind of remind you well you've missed the first deadline so there's a second deadline that we are encouraging you to hit which is the kind of more regular deadline which again somewhere around about four or five months before the festival um and there will be a slightly higher rate but it still won't be the highest rate and then you've given that one final warning going well that's the second deadline you know here's your final final and last chance if this is a festival you want to submit and you have a fest and a film ready you can submit it now but it's obviously going to cost you a little bit more um so you know it's 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 incentivize it as well uh, and all of these festivals will will donate uh, will uh explain what the cost in each case is i mean i don't know in, in rachel what were you generally finding to be the the fee that you were expected to pay in each case if you want to share that information that is um well i think for the for the good film festivals the one you're going for but to be fair actually i think around uh for, they come up in dollars normally even if they're in the uk um but around 40 to 60 dollars but you would get a lot of them charging 20 to 30 as well like a lot of them for the short films could be cheaper um i've yeah. actually got i made some notes out of one of the films that we're getting ready to do the festival run um for the shorts there's oh look here yeah they're around 40 dollars 25 pounds 26 dollars 30 dollars um edinburgh is 20 dollars yeah so actually the short films they're around yeah between 20 and 40 i'd say um, so that, there is, sorry, I was on, just going to say there is. Um, I watch out for the uh, one festival I I tried to get into didn't. Then the next film I had, I'd set it up very nicely. I'd got to know the festival, and I got I got into. And they are all about promoting inclusivity and opportunity for a lot of underrepresented people, and they are one of the most expensive film festivals to enter um, and they've only gone up over the years so it, it is good to keep an eye on prices and what festivals are doing because some of them some of them I think are a bit cheeky and it does put me off yeah I think it's also one of those things I you know and I, I um, have noticed this in, in the growth of festivals over the years that people see that there's there's a hunger for within filmmakers to obviously get their film shown and if they're not being successful with with the existing festivals they're kind of creating their own uh event and charging money for it because they know they can make money themselves out of it so there's a kind of i'm not saying they're strictly rip off but there are a number of those where it's more to the benefit of the festival because they know that they can exploit the hunger of the filmmakers um, rather than uh, the quality perhaps of um the programming and uh, attracting an audience that is enthusiastic so um it does need a little bit of um uh, careful maneuvering mm. through the lists um, but that comes in time and, and you learn from experience as much as anything else and it's also important um, this is why it's important to go to the festivals because again i thought to get in into one of them i was really like i'm gonna get this festival i'm gonna do it and i did and the screening cost so much money for people to attend to um and then you know there were people that had done films that for their first film were absolutely fantastic um and they traveled down from quite far away and it had only been themselves coming to see their own screening and whatever but um it was a smaller screening so everybody there was either cast or crew or friend or family member um and then at the end the way that they determined who won those ones and this is a really established film festival the way they determined who who was going to win at that screening um was was a vote by the people sitting there and there was one film that had turned up and it was the most represented category that you've ever heard of um but they'd brought absolutely everyone with them and they'd all been able to afford i think it was like 
between 20 and 30 pounds just to go and see this, which was insane. And of course, they've all put their hands up and, and won. And so in, in that case, it's good to have a look at what you're paying for. What are the opportunities you have to win from the festival or to gain as in um, sometimes you can go on to get mentors or there's all types of schemes that can come up, um, cash prizes, all of that. What, how does the festival work? What are you paying your money towards? How do the screenings work themselves? And that's why attending festivals will help you prepare for Film Freeway as well. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. I think that it is important. It's, it's like, a, you know, there we are, Sandra. It's, it's, it's you know, going along to these festivals and, and anyone else. You know, there, there are so many and it, it once you've got an experience of one festival, you might get a hunger for to go to others and you might meet people that also recommend festivals themselves and go along from festival to festival. So it's 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 a wonderful way of learning uh, a bit about the environment that you are hoping to um, be submitting your films into uh, and, and, and you hopefully avoid some of the pitfalls as well as uh, learning some of the shortcuts uh, and, and, and whatever that um, will also help. Um, I mean, I realise we're also running a little bit um, tight on time, so um, I do want to give a chance in case anyone has some questions. But I do want to, um, whilst, whilst Rachel has been talking about her own experience, I just thought I would highlight one particular short film um, that I thought is, is yeah, I'm not saying you'd, you'd know of it, but I think it's just um, an interesting example of this is, a, this is an action uh, thriller. Uh, British film, obviously um, directed by a Brit um, with with um, a cast, a British primarily British cast. But so far, it is playing, and this is this is. I mean, it might, and Rachel might kind of offer uh, her perspective here too. But this has been playing festivals now for nearly two years uh, con consistently. This is the sheer volume of films that are out there, and you know, you might miss it one year, but you know, the next year you might pick it up, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but it's been many. It's been submitted to so many festivals, um, and and many of them have had awards attached to them. So so far, I, I have found out that it's played 35 festivals to date globally. Um, that doesn't include the number of attempted uh, submissions. So the number of submissions to festivals is probably greater than 35. Um, and in fact, it's still waiting for a decision on three more festivals that it has submitted to, but no decision has been made um, on final programming. Um, but that will complete a two year festival circuit, you know, and some of the awards and nominations it's won is a small indication of success. So, you know, that's just uh, some of these festivals you know, are very small festivals, but, you know, they are in many ways representative of the type of film that this is showing. So Romford Film Festival is obviously uh, a general festival, uh, Urban Film Festival, we've mentioned there, but that fitted in. Riviera Film Festival is one that is, is down um, in Devon. Um, and then there are others that are much more focused around um, action movie festivals. But it has, for, for the filmmakers involved in this, then clearly it's been a successful festival experience. But that's two years, this, this one film has been doing the circuit. And I don't know with, with, with Rachel whether you've got the patience to to keep your films running for a, a, that length of time um, and whether they have a natural um, time limit anyway. Uh, some, some films can only be submitted, some film festivals you have to have made it within a certain time period. So that you can't um, dig out your films from 10 years ago and, and necessarily put them in. But uh, when we make a film, we normally say to the cast and the crew, you won't be getting this until for about two years yet. But actually, if you have the motivation to keep pushing film festivals, for, to be able to say you've had a, a film on the circuit for two years, people are going to be excited about you because often a lot of this, if you've got a good film, a lot of the rest of it is image and desirability. And if you're doing well in a festival, people are talking about you and, and they they have heard of you and they know who you are. So um, we actually, again, where we do get very lazy and after we've, we've done our big submission like the first time and paid out the money, we kind of let it trail off them. And we were actually taught in uni not to do that. You know, you can keep pushing it, keep going, have a solid long-term plan for it. So I actually, um, we, which is what we want to do now. We want, we, we've kind of got a year, um, the festivals over the next kind of year that we can submit to, um, maybe we should consider the two years now, 
uh, you've inspired me. But yeah, the the next year, it's like let's keep momentum up, um, and 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 keep it and keep it running because you know if, if it does well in uh, March and then it does well in September and December, you it could only do well in three places. But technically, it's been successful for a year, you know. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I think that is an important aspect. You know, trying to get film in a shown in a festival a cinema is, is is tricky and festivals can help do that if it's usually features but i think it's it's as i say there's so many festivals around the world that i think if you're prepared to give it that um breathing space as, as the quote said at the very beginning you know festivals need films films need festivals and it's become like an alternative um distribution network as well so um you know that's where you're finding your global audience through festivals rather than through cinemas strictly um I know we've, we've mentioned it um, earlier about uh, BAFTA um, short films, and as you can un understand, um, there is so, the number of short films that are now made each year, whether it's students or independently funded films, then you cannot submit every, every film that is, is made for a BAFTA. It's, it's, it's impossible, it's just sheer volume. So again, BAFTA has, has tried to monitor uh, well structure i think is a better way not monitor structure um uh, a way of um filtering the range of uh, films and the number of films that um are potentially up and eligible for winning um the the um bafta short film award um and there's usually one for documentary i think and one for animation so there's three short film awards so the way they've done it is is kind of um acknowledging that there are a number of festivals around the world um that if your short film gets selected for that festival then you automatically are given that opportunity to submit your short film to BAFTA so this is where they kind of talk about the A and B categories depending on the location um, and last year's winner was the present, which was uh, a British Palestinian director. Uh, you might have heard of it, um, you've seen it, but you can see again from the number of laurels there that it's played a number of festivals around the world. But just to give you an idea of some of the festivals that therefore BAFTA would uh, acknowledge your short film um, as, as being nominated, as if you appeared and think if you were um, programmed, it's not submissions, it's actually successful programming. In things like London Film Festival, Cannes, Edinburgh, Iris, uh, Melbourne, the Open Dock, Sheffield, Sundance, Venice, just to kind of, you know, some of them are high profile and others, you know, much more specific. But nevertheless, it means if you've got into one of those festivals, then you are in a position where you could submit your film then for the BAFTAs when submissions open for the BAFTAs. Um, category B tends to be uh, the UK festivals, which doesn't mean to say that they're any lesser, but it's kind of recognizing that there are so many festivals in the UK alone and these are the BAFTA which is obviously celebrating British film and TV um, then if you succeed in getting into the Aesthetica Film Festival, Flair, Glasgow Film Festival, London Short Film Festival or Raindance uh, and, and the Jewish Film Festival then again you are in a position where you could submit your film um, to BAFTA um, again, there is a, a link at the, at the bottom here, which you'll, you'll see when you, you look at the um, presentation in, in full, that lists the full list of festivals. So again, BAFTA does provide you with guidance there to say, these are the festivals that if you can get your film programmed in, and these are the ones therefore that, that obviously I think Rachel was, was looking at going, right, if I can get into those festivals, then I'm in a chance where I can get my film submitted to, to BAFTA. Um, so, it's all about strategy and learning um, how you might go about it. Um, so as, as we kind of bring this to a close, I just thought I would, I would highlight that at the moment there are two film festivals on that you might want to um, attend and some of them will be online, um, but others obviously are in person. Um, London Short Film Festival, which is running right way through to the 23rd of January. Some of you might have already been to that. Um, and you know there's screenings events and talks um that are connected with that um likewise you know sundance you know, you know i know we're talking over in utah um but there is certain content that you might be able to access from here um but you might want to monitor the success of the short films that are screened there and whether any of them are from uh, the uk or not um, a small selection of those films are later shown at the sundance 
London Festival that is shown in July. Um, but also, um, I am aware that there are three film festivals that have literally just opened to submissions. So if you are feeling particularly keen, you might want to think about the Edinburgh Short Film Festival. This is different than the uh, main festival. The main festival does shoot, feature for short films, but this is a specific short film festival, which is in October, November. And as you can see, there's a maximum length they would expect of a short film, always a big debate, 20 minutes. And the early bird fee, as we say, if, if you can get it in by the end of February, is £13. Um, IRS has now opened up for submissions. Uh, and as I say, there's, there's a £30,000 potential prize win, uh, attached to the winning film there. So again, the, the submissions are open for that with early bird uh, last until the end of March. An Aesthetica short film festival up in York, which I think the festival, uh, the university has submitted to in the past. You know, they've now got their regular submissions open until May, where it's £25 a short, um, and then it will go up, uh, you know, after that, but that's uh, an event in November. So that's kind of hopefully a, a, to incentivize you now. There's certainly a lot, I think, that you've um, no doubt got to, to think about uh, as a result of that uh, hopeful um, talk in general. Um, and I hope you found a lot of that to be extremely helpful with, with Rachel giving a lot of invaluable um, insight as to the actual experience of the filmmaker. Um, so that gives us a little bit of time, not much time, if anyone has um, specific... Um, yes, uh, if, there's any, if anybody has a particular... Um, point that they want to ask um claudia or... claudia has her hand up yes claudia what would you like to show us hi and um, thanks so much um i was just wondering a few things um one of which is i'm quite like insecure about my introduction for my film and i've actually hmm. started submitting it to some film festivals um, it's a documentary and i'm really happy with the overall documentary but i just don't really like my first three minutes because it's quite like factual and it's not very visual it's it doesn't really show I would say the strengths of the documentary and so my worry is that when they're looking through the submissions do they kind of give it a fair chance would they watch the whole thing or do they just watch the first three minutes and be like I'm bored mm -hmm. I'm <laughs> I can't be bothered to watch the rest um I'm just trying to make myself feel better because I've had <laughs> I've had like a hundred people I know watch it and they they've all been like really supportive and they think that it's definitely got a good chance but obviously because they know me they've watched the whole thing so they've really got involved with it um so yeah that's kind of a big long winded answer uh, question <laughs> well that's a good question uh, Rachel is there a perspective you you want to say from a filmmaker as, as to whether you 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 feel nervous to be judging a film or for people to judge your film on the opening two three minutes yeah well first of all you you do not have an opinion that reflects anything anymore because you're in the whirlwind of making it and it being your baby um show it to people you can get access to that you don't know or that will judge you critically um you know lecturers at the uni always welcome to send it to me i'm happy to give out my email address if you want feedback but um this is where uh, you, if you are worried about them getting bored in the first three minutes and you can get some impartial feedback that if that kind of you know was to maybe say oh it's a bit of a slow starter if you had a good enough press pack to go with it and the log line and the information let us know that, that there was going to be something like definitely worthwhile I mean a lot of people like factor information in the doc um, yeah. you know you're kind of it, if, is it it's if it's relevant and if it's the pace is going well, that information might be pivotal at, at that point. So without seeing it, that's a hard thing to answer, but I would definitely be asking the people, your peers, um, the people around you that aren't gonna give you a nice opinion um, and then come up with a log line that you can repeat confidently and effortlessly that leads you into co to, to describing this film like it is amazing yeah um yeah i and i would endorse a lot of that actually claudia i think you know and having been one that helps program festivals in the past you know i think it, when it comes to feature film 
you're maybe a little bit more um, critical if it comes to that, the opening section, because you're going, well, you know, I've got to sit through 90 minutes, you know, and if, if I'm really not getting into this after 10 minutes, then I'm not going to endure it. I think with short films, most people will watch the entire film. And I think with so many festivals out there, you, you know, I think how many are what we consider perfect films, even those that win films and and i think if you're you sometimes because you have made the film you're too close to it and and you don't realize that actually it's got a lot of strengths and you're only looking potentially at what is the weaknesses if if you've been already showing it to a whole range of people that you trust um and they're being honest and uh, enough with it then i think you should have the confidence to go out there and see whether there are festivals that really believe in your creativity and what you've come up with um and you might surprise yourself um you perhaps as a filmmaker uh, are personally thinking well i'm not going to make a film that way next time but on the other hand if you find that this film is not a hindrance um and, and the way that you start it is hasn't stopped your film from being selected by festivals then you know that's going to be a good thing yeah Thank you. Uh, and again, I mean, like, I, I mean, I'm happy to have a look at it if, if you uh, as well at some point, if, if you feel that would be helpful. Um, but just believe in yourself. But I say that, that, that there's so many festival choices out there. It's it's I think, you know, you could surprise yourself as, as to who actually embraces it. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to I would love to send it to um, to either or both of you um, just for another opinion that would be really helpful if you I mean it is quite long it is like 50 minutes so obviously don't, cool. don't feel like you have to watch it but um <laughs> I can always send it over anyway but, okay well we really can perhaps arrange with that through Suzanne but thank you thank you anybody else got any other thoughts because we are oh, just a little bit over time I don't, how, how um Sophie yes uh yeah I guess any advice you know for like uh networking you know i i feel like i've gone to so many networking events and handed out cards and done all the stuff that i've need to do but you know it's always been hard to you know have people end up getting back to me or wanting to end up working yeah, with it's me so you uh, uh, talking in terms of trying to find a team to make a film with, or are you talking just in general about developing relationships with the wider film industry and, and filmmakers? Uh, find a team or a crew. Okay. Well, maybe Rachel is, 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 could give us some advice there. I mean, it's a, it's an arduous task networking and 95% of it's going to be like, oh, this is a waste of time, but you will eventually meet some great people. I would just say is that when you're going to networking events, um, be confident in your, in your skills and what the things that you want to do um, and what you can offer as a filmmaker and any ideas that you have. Again, if you can work on your your log lines for those ideas and keep your pitches nice and short just give the people those little hooks um to mention what you're doing ask them about what they're doing people love to talk about themselves so if you can ask questions even a couple just to get someone engaged and then you can just slip in some of the things that you've done or you're doing uh, you know practice practice these little log lines or these little sentences like make it quite catchphrasy um you'll very quickly s work out if you gel with someone or not you can excuse yourself if you don't um and then and then you know get their card email them to follow up and you know unfortunately not everybody's going to to get back to you and not everybody's real at these events as well but if you keep doing it and practicing you will get there Yeah, I oh. think that's that's very true. Well, how are we for time there, Suzanne? I, I realise we're kind of um, we've well, gone over a little bit. 
we have gone over unless there's um does anyone have any last questions do you mind do you mind us answering one more yeah okay yeah. sandra yes what what would you, you like just to say ask? this is the last one and this uh, is the hello, last can, you, can you hear me yes we can sandra yeah. Hi. Yes, I just have a quick question. So I'm studying media and communication at, at London Met, and I was wondering if it's possible at all to join a group of students from another course who are also who are involved in making some kind of short film. And I was wondering if you know if it's possible at all, because um, I don't think I will have any opportunity in, in my modules anymore to make any short film. And I was just wondering if it's possible at London Met at all to connect with any group of students who also make something, or is it just specific to a course? Oh, uh, maybe Suzanne can offer that one. I, I yeah. Um, <laughs> did you know there's a film society, um, and that and the film society actually makes films, and they have had some budget to make films. Um, so that might be uh, one way of kind of of getting to collaborate with people. That's amazing. Yeah. Do you know how I could like join? Well, I can share the name of somebody that has been involved and I think he is involved he he graduated last year but he's now working as a technician at the university but I will give you his I think he's still involved with the film society so let me just this is his email address okay that, that would be amazing thank you so much um yeah I'll just sh I'll share it in the chat okay amazing thank you so much thank you there Sandra and good luck I think I think what it, a lot of the time is is it's it's learning to to um, find people to collaborate with and 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 believing in ourselves I think um, in in what what sort of films we want to make and that there is audiences out there that want to see them um, but we just need to um, <coughs> as I say just just learn that this is a bit of an industry and we need to do some work in order to try and find that it just it just doesn't happen we need to make an effort but i think if we're passionate enough enthusiastic enough uh, and committed to to making films of whatever genre whatever subject matter then um, there is an audience out there ready and waiting and hungry to see your films so thank you everyone for listening um, i hope that's been helpful it is just a an introduction there's a lot obviously that we can go into in far greater depth but hopefully we've covered the main bases um and 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 therefore rachel has been hugely helped so thank you rachel for offering personal perspective on on what it's like to actually submit films to festivals thank you for having me my pleasure and and thank you uh, suzanne for organizing this um it, it, do we leave this over to you suzanne to, to 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 bring everything to a close or do i say uh, thank you and good night. <laughs> yeah, I could just say um, thanks to everyone who attended and um, we will, I'll send the this presentation out to course leaders. Um, but if you're a graduate, maybe just just email me and I can I can pass on um, the presentation and the link. We will put it on our YouTube um, uh, London Met Film YouTube site as well. So, yes, um, I hope you got something out of it. And, you know, do make an effort to, you know, even just apply to you know, send your film for one festival, you know, just have a go. And um, I'm sure, you know, you'll get something out of it. And, and yes, as, as you know, as, as uh, Rachel said, it's like, do get a chance if you get a chance do go along to some of these festivals either as uh, as an audience member um, and, and therefore meet um some of those filmmakers themselves or actually maybe even make the effort to, to volunteer and actually get actively involved and therefore see it from from being a part of the team so good luck to everybody and and uh, you know again i'll be available from that um in the university and some of you will see me no doubt uh, lecturing you too so um there will be more we'll we'll talk about um in the coming months during term time thank you very much paul that was brilliant and thanks very much rachel good and good night yes good night everyone <laughs>